Hello, goddess. Welcome to Wealthy Women's Wednesdays. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And congratulations. If you can't hear me, be sure to click the microphone at the bottom of the screen. I'm so excited to be here with you today. I'm here in Orange County, California at this fancy hotel. And if the internet cuts out, just be patient with me. I'll be right back. Um, I'm about to speak at this wonderful women's conference. And today's topic has to do with what I'm here to speak about. I'm here to speak about authentic storytelling um, to grow a business that's highly successful and gives back, how to leave a legacy with our business. And that has so much to do with the topic for today, which is storytelling for success, right? Because there's a different way of telling stories that's going to attract your ideal clients. And it's different than just telling a story to perform. And we want to get you this recipe, uh, the three-part recipe for storytelling that attracts clients so that you don't have to be out there telling stories that just, you know, performance, entertainment, you know, um, stories that, right, just capture people's attention. You've got to tell a story that actually has people hungry to take a next step with you. So my absolute intention for today is that you leave here with a recipe that you can apply to your own story that you tell from stage on video camera and you can actually use that story to attract ideal clients. This is one of my favorite things to teach and um, what I am very interested in is what is your biggest question about story. Okay, so post below, um, have you been telling stories on stage? What's your intention for being here today? Are you trying to decide which story to tell? Are you trying to decide how to um, weave your audience into the story? Um, are you still confused about how to tell your story? So what's your biggest question about storytelling from stage and telling a story that attracts your ideal clients? And please post it below so that we can get the engagement. And thank you and welcome everybody who's posting. The thing about story is that when we tell it, it can be a healing opportunity for ourselves, for our future clients. And what's so cool is that the way you tell a story, I believe can actually rewrite what happened in your mind. So any stories that you might still feel like a victim of, right? Um, we can actually look today at how to tell those stories as client attracting stories so that you can continue to do your healing work around it. One of my favorite stories to tell is my story of when I literally started my business and almost gave up like 50 times. I was $25,000 in debt. I was an emotional wreck and I didn't know that my company was going to grow into being a seven figure company serving over 100,000 women around the world. And how could I have known at that point when everything felt so bad and so vulnerable and so dire? Um, I'm going to tell you this story and then I'm going to debrief the story so that you can actually see how to apply the recipe of my story to your story when you choose your story. So about seven years ago, I was a school teacher. I was making $28,000, $30,000 a year and my marriage was beginning to really suffer. And you know, I love teaching. And I'm sure many of you can relate to this. I, I found myself in a career that was just soul crushing. I love the kids, but I couldn't actually say the things that I needed to say. I was living by somebody else's rules. No child left behind. Standardized testing. And I stepped out and took a risk to start my business. But of course, when I first started my business, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I didn't have a mentor. I didn't really have a plan. And things began to go downhill very quickly. Um, I decided that it would be a really wise thing to do to move from Oregon to California with my husband because I was convinced that moving to California would solve all my problems. My marriage, my career, and it didn't. Moving to California just exacerbated the problem that we were in debt and I wasn't making any money in my business yet. And it got more and more painful. Now, my way of solving that problem was to manifest the money. I had learned all kinds of things about manifestation. And the truth is, is that I wasn't right with money. You know, my husband watched as I, the way that I was going about 
getting more clients and building my business was that I was having lunch with other entrepreneurs over you know, an organic plate of greens, overlooking the ocean in California, talking about how I was going to manifest these clients, right? And then I remember um, waking up in the morning and journaling in my journal about all the inner work I needed to do and the limiting beliefs I needed to let go of in order for the clients to come in. And then I remember going shopping with one of my girlfriends and we decided we were going to buy ourselves future self pants. And these pants represented my future self and they were silver and flowing and they were $200. My husband at the time almost killed me. This got so bad that my husband and I were barely talking and I knew that at some point the marriage was probably going to end and yet I didn't have the money to even be able to make that decision. I had launched an online project and had spent thousands of dollars doing it with no revenue. I remember my body got so tight and I started walking around with so much money shame, feeling worse and worse and worse about myself that I ended up laying on my back on the ground in my backyard, over, like looking up at the sky. I could not even move my head because I was in so much pain. My neck was out, the pressure on me, the financial pressure, the lack of self-worth I was feeling, it just all sort of encapsulated and I just was a mess. I felt like a total failure. I thought I was gonna go back and get another teaching job, hopefully if I could find one. And I remember just starting to pray to this angelic shaped cloud overhead and in the prayer, I started to bawl. I started to just fall apart and emotionally break down and cry and cry and cry and cry. And, the, and so much pain and suffering just started to kind of ooze out of me. And you know, the, the, the suffering for the impending loss of my, my marriage and the suffering for how much I longed to help people and I didn't know how. In that moment, I remember letting myself feel all those feelings was like some sort of connection, energetic connection to every other woman on the planet who is trapped in a disempowering circumstance because of money. I, God, I just remember feeling the women on the other side, you know, millions of women. Like we were like this network, women from all different countries, third world countries, women in far worse situations than I was because of a financial dependence. Right? There's a way in which women have oftentimes get gotten stuck in, in highly disempowering and sometimes abusive situations because of a lack of financial empowerment and a lack of resources. And I remember in that moment feeling my heart broken open for this journey that we're all on as women learning to make our own money, keep our own money, value ourselves, ask for the sale. My heart broke open with compassion for all of us and uh, I made a prayer and a commitment to the universe in that moment that I would do everything I could possibly do to help other women who are in need if the universe would just please get me out of this situation, right? Just please, can you solve my financial problems and if you help me, I will help as many women as I can. And believe it or not, in the days that followed, that was what began to happen doors began to open to me. I met my first mentor. I came up with a creative way of financing, hiring my first mentor. I made a business plan. I turned my online project around to the tune of six figures. I created over $100,000 worth of revenue when about 110 folks signed up for my very first $1,000 product. And my life turned around and the Women Rocking Business organization that you now see was born. And you know we're getting now to serve tens of thousands of women around the world. And like you, I have had so many moments of not knowing if this was ever gonna work. And I'm curious for you, what's your story of when you almost gave up, you maybe almost gave up on yourself, you maybe almost gave up on life, you maybe almost gave up on your dreams, maybe you had a health crisis, maybe you had a relationship failure, maybe you had a financial crisis like me. And that story has been a part of your PhD program which has been preparing you to serve the clients who are waiting for you. So, 
let's talk about this. And as you feel into your story, I want you to really affirm that your story is setting you up for exactly the right clients who are going to be finding you. Affirm that to yourself right now. And then, you know, post your ideas below on the comment thread. Which story do you want to tell? Let's talk a little bit about the three part recipe to telling a story that's actually a client attracting story. We'll apply it to the story I just told you. And then I want to help you choose a story that's going to attract your clients. So goddesses, the very first thing that you want to do when you tell a client attracting story is you want to engage your audience. Number one, engage your audience or your participants. How did I do that? Well, I didn't just dive into my story. I let you know what you were going to learn from you know, hanging out with me over the next 20 or 30 minutes. I let you know why you might be here. You may be here because you're building a business and you want to be able to tell your story in a way that's actually client attracting, right? And I let you know that I was going to tell a story that you may find relevant to you. So how do you engage your audience? Maybe with a question by letting them know, hey, I'm curious if any of you have ever felt the the following challenges. Have you ever challenged, been challenged with your health? Have you ever been challenged with, you know, your ability to trust yourself? Well, I understand what that was like. I was once where you are. Engage your audience first. Don't just dive into a story all, that's all about you. And don't introduce yourself first, because that's, again, all about you. You want to make it about them. Number two, your story has to have a clear turning point. Your story can't be spaghetti. What do you guys think my turning point was? Post it in the comment section below. What do you think the turning point of my story was? Not buying the future self pants. The turning point of my story, right, was laying on my back in total pain, my neck going out, my body wasn't working. I was, you know, in excruciating, excruciating discomfort feeling the, the heartbreak for all women on the planet who struggle with money. And things started to turn around once I allowed myself to fall apart and feel everything I needed to feel, right? You have a turning point to your story as well. In fact, you probably have many turning points and that, my friends, is the problem. You've got to choose one, one turning point. Even though life will give you many turning points, if you, do, if you try to tell your story in a way where you describe every turning point and up and down and up and down and then it got better and then it got worse and then it got better and then this really bad thing happened, guess what's going to happen? People's eyes are going to glaze over and they're going to click away from you. So your job is to figure out one, only one turning point for your story. Talk about the time when it got the hardest. And then from there, it's got to go up, 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 okay? So things got worse, 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 right? For me, let me see if I could do this across the screen. So things got, you know, I was running out of money. I, I moved to California to try to solve all my problems. I didn't like teaching. It wasn't fulfilling. I was spending money on things I didn't need, like future self pants. My marriage was falling apart. I was trying to solve my business problems by being metaphysically, right? Worse, 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 worse. It got so bad that... I was $25,000 in debt. My entire body was in pain. I had to do something different. And then I made some decisions. I found a mentor. I started trusting myself again. I got into action doing the right things rather than the wrong things. And I slowly crawled out of the hole that I was in. What is your turning point? Number one, recipe to tell a story that attracts your clients. Engage your audience. Number two, Pick a legitimate turning point. And number three, make sure that you tie your story back. Tie your story back to your audience. What do you think that means? Post it in the comment section below. This third piece is the most important thing that you can do. Without the tie back, your story is not a client attracting story. And you're about to find out why. So what do you think the tie back is? What do you think that means? What does it mean to tie it back? Type it into the comments thread below. And hi, yes, welcome. So glad you're all here. Thank you for posting. Goddesses, your tie back is your ability 
to actually now let the audience in on your story in a way that makes it relevant to them. Do you guys remember what my tie back was? If you remember, type it in below so we can get a little note taking guide of learning here. Right, my tie back had to do with your story. I made my story your story. I said, whatever you've been through, whether it was a relationship challenge, a financial challenge, a health crisis, right? whatever story has carved out your life as a PhD program, preparing you for the message that you're here to bring, that story is the story that's gonna attract the clients to you, help you fill your practice, help you fulfill your business dreams, right? You've got to have a tie back, write that down, circle it, point arrows at it. You can actually tie back all kinds of little stories. If you're somebody that wants to spend time on stage, on camera, mastering the art of the tie back is going to be huge. So what does a tie back sound like? Somebody type this into the comments thread so you guys can actually copy and paste this into your notes. A tie back sounds like Think of a time when you struggled with X, Y, or Z. I'm curious, have you felt like I did and you were challenged with X, Y, or Z? For those of you who have had X, Y, or Z experience, here's the stake I'm putting in the ground for you. I, for those of you that are desiring and longing to create X, Y, and Z, I understand how that, how that feels and we're gonna be covering that over the next little bit of time together, right? These are all sentence stems and phrases that tie your story back to your audience. So is this helpful? Please, if this is helpful, if this is helpful to you, you know, hit the share button, share this with one of your friends on Facebook. You know, we're all in this together, this journey of getting our businesses off the ground and doing it in a way that's authentic, that actually allows us to share our truth and not turn into robots. So if this, if you're finding this helpful, please share it. Um, please post this on your Facebook page, reshare this. Um, I really believe that if we can all keep supporting each other in the way that we do, we're all going to get that much further together. Now, for those of you who would like to take this one step further, I have something super exciting to tell you about. I'm speaking in Hay House University at the Toronto event, May 19th. And that day that you could come to, we have about 10 or 12 seats left, is going to be a day of helping you craft your entire client attracting talk. So I know this is crazy that I'd be inviting you to Go to Toronto, Canada and spend an entire day with me. I get it. But when we're in business for ourselves, sometimes we have to take the leap and do something that's a little bold, a little crazy, a little outside of the box. So come join me. We have 10 or 12 seats left. I'm doing something crazy. I'm doing a flash sale. So for those of you that join me on May 19th in Toronto, Canada, we're going to spend the entire day together helping you craft your talk. You're going to get your offer so that you know exactly how to make an offer that has clients say yes to you, to working with you. You're gonna um, learn how to craft breakthrough exercises in your content so that you actually have an entire talk that you can deliver on stage or on video camera that has people raise their hands and say yes if they're the right ones to work with you. Because you don't need everybody. You just need however many clients you need. You decide how many do you want. And for those of you that jump in and spend the day with me in Canada, I'm going to do this crazy thing. I'm going to be giving away my $1,000 training course called Events That Change Lives. It's a 90-day program that teaches you how to fill events, how to host longer retreats and workshops that are actually profitable, what's the profit plan, what's the business plan behind transformational workshops and retreats, how do you lead events, how do you become a speaker and make a living doing it. So you're going to get my $1,000 Events That Change Lives training course totally for free. Again. This is the only time I'm doing this. You're going to get it totally for free when you reserve your room, your spot, your seat <laughs> at the Toronto event, at the Hay House University event in Toronto, Canada. Now, I'm going to be speaking alongside Joe Dispenza and Gabby Bernstein and Carrie Green. And again, this is the one time I'm doing this where if you come to Toronto, all you have to do is email my office, let them know that you're coming, that you got your ticket, and 
we will gift you our entire 90-day curriculum, our entire 90-day training course called Events That Change Lives. So goddess, join me in Toronto. Step one, click the link below, grab your ticket through Hay House. Then we're going to get you your entire signature talk, so that your client attracting talk. We'll create that with you that day. And then step two, email my office, let us know that you jumped in, and we will send you access to our entire Events That Change Lives training course. It's such an honor. It's such an honor to support you. It's such an honor to serve you. So excited to help you rock your, your talks. Because when we speak as women, when we get out there and speak and share and lead workshops and inspire people and make videos and get on stage, even if you're nervous to do those things, even if you don't feel like you're going to be perfect, when we do that, we are doing the thing that we are built for as women. You know, we're built to show up, to be generous, to give. And then when the right people say, oh my God, that changed my life, we just say, there's more where that came from. And so having that client attracting talk is going to allow you to not have to go out and chase clients anymore. It's gonna allow all of the clients that you wanna be working with to find you because they're gonna be attracting, they're gonna be attracted to hearing your talk. Thank you for being the very best part of Wealthy Women's Wednesdays. You're amazing, we love you. Thank you for being a part of Women Rocking Business. We'll see you on the other side. Hopefully I'm gonna see some of you at Hay House in Canada. Don't miss it. It's going to be incredible. Two days of total transformation learning and taking your business to the next level. Please post below and let us know what story you're going to tell. Oh my gosh! I can't believe. I almost forgot. Thank you for reminding me on the chat, the text thread. I promised you I would help you decide which story to tell. Oh my god. How could I almost forget? <laughs> how do you tell which? How do you choose a story? You choose a story by asking yourself, what are my clients going through that I have been through myself? And then you choose that story that mirrors your client's challenges, right? Because think about it, you can actually tell almost any story you want with a strong tie back. And I know many of you have been through all kinds of things, lots of little moments and lots of painful stories that you could choose from. But I'd like to invite you for your first story. Remember, you're going to be able to tell all kinds of stories throughout the course of your career. But for this first story, I invite you to choose a story that reflects what your clients have been through. Whatever challenge you've been through that might be the same as your clients, if you've been through a health crisis, tell the story in a way that your clients are going to be able to relate to that. If you've been through a relationship crisis, if you've been through a career crisis, if, if you've been through a time, a challenging time when you just couldn't trust yourself anymore and you just didn't even want to live and you just wanted to give up on everything, tell that story and tell it in a way that anybody who's wanted to give up at any point in their lives is going to be able to relate to it and tie it back, you know, if you've ever had a time where you wanted to give up. Okay? So that's how you choose a story. Let me know which story you're going to tell in the comments thread below. I'd love to hear but I'll be checking later on on you. And again, thank you for rocking your business alongside us. Thank you for being in the sisterhood. Keep letting us know what stories you're going to tell. And please join me in Toronto so I can actually help you craft step by step all day together. We're going to go deep on one topic, and that is how to create a client attracting talk. I think you're going to love it. I can't wait to see you there. Let us know you hopped in, and my team will give you access to the entire Events to Change Lives course. Your clients are waiting for you. They're not just waiting for someone like you. They're actually waiting for you. 